As worship leaders, we love bringing new songs into the fray, but how do we make sure that the song we've chosen is a good fit? Well, first, let's understand that the whole point of worship is to create a comfortable environment for people to worship, to pray, to petition, and to love our Lord. This is why we want songs that are easy to sing, so people don't have to spend energy trying to figure out how the thing is meant to go. Most people are not musical, so we have to keep things simple. But what does that even mean? I mean, how do you define a simple song? Well, from a technical point of view, there's actually three points I can make. The first is that we want to try to make sure the vocal range of the melody doesn't exceed 10 degrees. But what do we mean by that? Well, when we talk about scale degrees, we're talking about the notes that make up the scale. So from C to C is an octave, it's eight notes. And then if you go up an extra two notes, you've got an E, which would be our 10th scale degree. And that's sort of the maximum range that you want to sing because outside of that range, people start finding it difficult to reach notes. And fortunately, it can even pull people out of worship. Now, I do plan to make a video at some point discussing how to pick the right key for a song, but for now, let's move on to the second point, which is that we want to try to stay away from complex intervals. Now, I made a whole video about intervals a few weeks back if you want an in-depth study on that. But basically, an interval is just the gap between two notes on a melody. People are most comfortable with second, thirds, and fifths. So a second would be from a C to a D. A third would be from a C to an E. And a fifth would be from a C to a G. Assuming the song was in the key of C, of course. For the purpose of this video, complex intervals are basically everything else. So fourths, sixths, sevenths, diminished and augmented intervals. We're most comfortable with short, simple intervals. Jumping too far between notes or too unconventionally can cause people to start focusing more on getting the song right than on God. The third point I can make has to do with rhythms. There's a reason why most drumming teachers start with a 4-4 four, four, and a 3-4 and a 6-8, and that's because they're the most common rhythms in music. We want to stay away from complex rhythms like 5-4 or 7-8 or even weirder ones like 13-16, they may sound fun and different and unique, but we need to keep in mind that most people are used to counting in four, which means an odd count will throw them off and it can feel like you skipped a beat. The bottom line is, we need to remember that most people in the congregation are not musicians. Finally, I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about the lyrics. If you have a song that is easy to sing, people will start to really focus on the words, and it's for this reason that it's so important to read through the lyrics of a song before introducing it to the church. A lot of people find it really difficult to pray, and so the words they're singing become their prayer. Remember, just because a song was written by your favorite gospel singer does not necessarily mean it was meant to be a church song. Before I end this video, I just want to point out that easy to sing does not have to mean boring for the worship team. At some points, I do plan to make a video showing you how you can add complexity to a song while keeping it congregation friendly. I really hope this video has been helpful to you. I'll see you in the next one.